Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. I feel like since we've been talking about uh, somebody that's kind of been a, you know, a recurring theme on our show. uh, I heard something from another recurring uh, member of our show. Oh, sister Jada. Um, And uh, recently in the interview where she was talking about uh, how she, Will Smith and his ex-wife take trips together without her, you know, and they go on, you know, family vacations and hang out and, meet up in spots without her and you know it's completely benign and you know platonic and all those good words um but it got me to thinking as a married man pat you you cool with your significant other going on dates or hanging out or going on trips with another with an ex without you let me be honest with y'all let me be honest with y'all now I know there could be situations where if I really examine it, it it might not phase me. That also depends on the trust I have with that person, how much I know that person, and how much I know their relationship. But if you're gonna ask me flat out in a general basis, would I would be comfortable? with my significant other out there with their with their ex at any time. I'm gonna be like, hell the fuck no. And even if I know the situation, it is not a situation that I'm not shouldn't be worried about. Somewhere in my subconscious mind, I'm thinking to myself, no, I'm not comfortable. I'm waiting for you to bring your ass back. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna your discuss ass back. And then we're going to discuss everything that's going on because what you're not going to have me looking is like a fool in these streets. I'll fuck you and that motherfucker to fuck up. (laughs) Man, now me and my wife have a great relationship. We're very open. We talk about everything. Like we, we, she knows my past very vividly and vice versa. But I ain't gonna front. I'm in a unique situation. Well, me and my wife, right? Listeners, you'll get this video. This will never come to YouTube. Um, but anyway, uh, so my wife, right? She, is, I'm her second in life. So her ex before me was her first. Oh, nigga, no. No, we ain't going back. We ain't about to take, no, we ain't about to get that. No chance to rekindle no shit. I'm straight. And I'm, and I'm very secure in myself, but I just know human nature. Like, yeah, I'm not about to go hang out with my first. Damn sure ain't about to go hang out with my first. My first was a abuse, but my first one that I wanted. I ain't mm-hmm. about to go hang out with her. We ain't about to kick it. What the fuck is he hanging for? Now, in Will's case, now we'll say this: he got kids with it. I ain't I'm yeah. cool parenting. Like, if my wife had kids before me or something like that, I'd be cool with her. Yeah, there's a there's a purpose behind his. I'd be yeah. cool with her going to engagements. You know, obviously, like you know, you got to show up to graduations and recitals and games and shit. And that motherfucker gonna be there, and y'all gonna have to interact and chill. And I get all that. We ain't going on no trips, though. No, you ain't going to no motherfucking island and go hang out with n- nigga. No. Well, where we going? We can go. If I'm, I'm there, I, if I'm there, we grave it. We grave it, I'm baby. A, we can all hang out with me and this nigga going to dap up. We can, yeah, we can have a great old week, but I'm going to be there. I think the reason I think, I think uh, Jada don't go because she ruins the vibe. I nowadays I'm kind of look at her like she's a vibe, she's a vibe ruiner. Like everything would be cool, it would be no drama, no beef with them or anything if she stay her happy ass home. If she goes with them, 
that's when it's going to be some drama. And it's next thing you know, there's another fucking red table talk that nobody so wants. Probably much. stay away from most situations. To be my honest. other my other point is that, sir, God so, has really blessed you with your wife because yeah. that you're the second. That means you don't have. Like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We got uh, you, like when I say me and my wife are polar opposites. The fact that we are as strong and as dedicated and have been this long faithfully is amazing to both of us a lot. Like I was a whore. She was a very chill girl. Her first major boyfriend as an adult was her first. Like she was very much on the normal path of like I'm living my life the good way. You know what I'm saying? Got her degree the first time through with honor. Like, she was the shit. Man, you and was... Then some thug ass me stumbling through. Hold up. We done, we done, we done lost three children already. Uh, out here still acting a fool. Uh, cops coming to chase you every weekend. Like, like, yeah. So, the fact that me and my wife got together in general and, like, made it this far is crazy. You want to know the other reason why? that i um, been single for so long because your wife is one in a million because the rest of these no nah, I'm gonna tell you what these, I'm gonna tell you what I gotta is. compete with every nigga she's talking to and every uh-huh. nigga before Jeez. not necessarily I don't have to compete with nobody but nowadays like there's like um look I'm gonna tell you what it is, though, man. It's the ones you be overlooking. They be beautiful as hell, but you don't be peeping them because you be looking for the baddie. It's what your eyes is trained for, Pat. I've seen your girls. You have a certain type. Damn it. And that type is going to lead you to have crazy girls in your life. Like That's they true. bad. You you like the baddies. They just don't have the hat hairs all the time. They 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 often have natural hair, but they be like real baddie type. Uh, it, it's a lot of yes, bitch in them, even if they don't say yes. Like yeah, I, I, I'm thinking back to a, back at ODU, the- back a. If you know who a is, like mm. like like I want you to just see that stream. Even see. even the Caucasian girl, like all of them have a similar thread of but- like. The, it's the like thing, you like that on the edge. It's like they the just thing. good enough to get by, but they got that. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the thing is, right? I don't try to go and talk to them. They come to me. But that's the thing. You allow it. See, this is the thing. When I got with Poop, the reason that shit happened, you got to think about where I was at in life. I was coming off the the the, the Brenda shit, mm. and I was in a place of like after that shit, I was so jaded off of women. I was really on some like I'm on me for a girl sure. to get my attention. She gonna have to be like the shit. Mm-hmm. And you also have to realize for months, I, um, me and Poop worked together and didn't like each other. Like I didn't care for her that much. I had her number for months and never called once. Not a not a dial, not a drunk dial. She hollered at me, but it was at a point where I was like, "All right, I'll see what's up with you." But I still was jaded. It's just mm-hmm. she was actually the real deal. But I put myself in that position because I was working on me, so I was able to find a girl that was like, I, I was able to be there. If I mm-hmm. wasn't at a certain place with myself. And knowing who I was and understanding what I would accept, what I would not accept, then I would have still been experimenting. We would not have, like, I would not have dealt with her. And, or, or, you know, what I mean, I would, like, I wouldn't even probably gave her a chance. Like, I, th- I think at the end of the day, it comes down to, like, where you at. Like, mm-hmm. when you hit a certain, it's like you get tired of certain shit. And it's like, all yeah. right, look, it's basically what happens to women, but it happens to them later. For me, it happened to me early. Like, but you got to remember too, I'm weird. 
I wanted a fam- I wanted a full family marriage, picket fence, kids, two car garage, all that at 17. I was True. a teenager who wanted a family. So like there's certain shit that in me was already there that lined up. You feel me? Like I had been engaged twice. I had done certain things by that point where it was like, I'm ready for this. I had I had fucked a certain amount of girls. Like I, I think men often overlook that piece in themselves of like, have I actually reached that critical place of like I am at a point where I can forsake all other and be focused on this one? Mm-hmm. What happens is we force ourselves into a lot of shoes that don't fit, and then we end up and the shit don't work because we weren't really ready in the first place. Like, are you even ready for that level of a commitment with a woman? To where you're able to make it work on that level without saying, man, fuck this, I'm out. Like, I had to be in a place where I was willing to get past, fuck this, I'm out, and say, no, fuck this, we're going to work it on, work on it. That's even a, a thing. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't there. Me and Poop never get here. You did. True. True. Like, that, that is a, a process within myself that came with a lot of losses and wins before that that led me to that. If you ain't had that certain amount of experiences yet, like I had a lot of compressed because like I my my life experience was compressed at an early age. So like yeah. there's a lot that most people experience over 20 years that I experienced in like five to seven years because of a certain lifestyle I was living, the situations I put myself in, etc. So like I think it's unfair to judge. Like I always tell people, like you can you can get nuggets of like how to work on shit for me and poop, but you can't get like how to get her or me or her get me mm-hmm. because that's like some shit that like it almost wasn't supposed to happen. Like we kind of defy the odds. Like yeah. we are both Capricorns, but yet we are very different. Like she is very like she likes to she she's into a very different train of thought than I am. Mm-hmm. But it works because we work. Like we are both, we were both at a place where like she wanted it bad enough and I wanted it bad enough. And our growth lined up enough to where like the place I was growing to matched the trajectory she was on. True. But it had to be like I chose that t- time. Don't rush it. Like there's yeah. nothing that says you have to be, you have to find that at no age. And I think that society puts pressure on it like it ain't a race to it it's like get the right one period mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like there's a human need to have a companion so that shit makes sense for anybody to want somebody like that's normal but don't just want somebody to the point where you just accept anybody like it's okay to be like no i'm good like but that takes time you have to go through experiences to get to the point where you cool with being by yourself like when i met when i got with poop i wasn't fucking with nobody I'm, I was I'm, I'm just going out, having fun, partying, and then not calling nobody. Like, I was on some shit where I wasn't dating. I wasn't doing nothing. Like, the most you would get out of me is a dance at the club. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was at a point where I was, like, really just in myself and just enjoying myself and learning myself. So, I was able to withstand. I was at a point where I didn't need Kuntu. You got to be there. If you need I'm, Kuntu, you're, you're you you ain't red. I I'm I feel like I'm that way now because now I'm getting offers, but I'm like, yeah, you. It's like I can see all the bullshit before it happens if I deal with this. Well, there you go. So you already in a good place. So just stay there. And mm-hmm. Just keep your life in the meantime, like the right yeah. one. Because what's gonna happen is. The right one is gonna come and it's not gonna feel forced. Like you're gonna like this is how I knew Pook was the one. We went on our first date. First of all, she hollered at me and was like, Why you didn't call me? I need you to we gonna I'm gonna call you at this time. We're gonna hang out this night, that etc. She set it all up. Cool, right? Mm-hmm. But when we hung out the first night, I knew she was the one because the next morning, like we hung out all night, we talked for like six hours. I don't need you know me, Pat. I ain't no big talker like that. We yeah. talk for six hours, bro. 
you can hang with somebody for that the long. Morning, I woke up. We went. We went. She dropped me off because I had work, and I I offer her bread like, "Hey, you want some money? You got money in your pocket? Like, you know, what I'm saying we gonna like you good." I ain't never wanted to do that for no girl. True. Like I wanted a girl to take care of me. Give me, give me. I was always the chosen one. Like, nah, you you gonna do right by me? Like I was always, hey, buy me food. Give me this. Make me this. Do this for me. So I, it was like the first unselfish moment. Like you're gonna find yourself not forcing things that formerly felt like forced. Like yeah hard for me to do like no I don't, like it's 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 hard being married but it's easy because i want to do it it's mm -hmm. like a job you want like when you draw that shit is difficult it's difficult to get the detail in and make the foot look like you wanted to make it look and make the hand yep. movement and make the motion lines look the exact way you wanted it in your brain and all that but you like to do it so it doesn't feel hard mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the people that go to work, they come home, they physically tired, but they're mentally like excited to go back. Like yeah. that's the type of feeling that I have in my marriage. Like, and I think that that comes with time and just experience. You have to experience a lot of different types of women to know, like, oh, that's the, that's what I've been needing. Because mm -hmm. it ain't about what you want, even it's about what's the best for you. With like that marriage fits. is literally a partnership. Like what what's gonna make the best partner for me for the rest of my life? Not what's gonna make the best fuck buddy, the me the best homie. The, like it's all of those things. Like what what it. Mm -hmm. I hate to put this analogy in it, but it, this is the best way I can make it make sense to people that's not in a healthy marriage. A healthy marriage is like you found the person that gives you A minuses and B pluses in everything. Like they're like the 90, like they're like the, they got a over, they overall 99 because every attribute is like a 92, 96, 93, 95, 90, you know what I mean? Like it's all yeah. high. None of them are perfect. There's flaws in each piece, but they're all so high. Like they balance out to like we can make this work, and they balance off of your shit. Like I'm really not a talker. I'm an introvert. My wife is an extrovert, so that means I don't have to do too much. I can do what I like to do anyway, which is listen. Mm -hmm. And then when I do talk, my words have more profound meaning because I'm actually saying something that matters to her. I'm a big texter. Which means that for her, she gets messages of affirmation and love throughout her day without having to be told just because that's what I that's my preferred method of communication anyway. So all the shit I've been wanting to say when I was sitting there in front of you that I ain't want to actually say verbally, mm -hmm. you get that now when you off. So now that fits her mode. Like like we we balance each other, you know what I mean? So that's all it is. But you got you don't know what your balance is that you don't experience a lot of shit. So that's why I say, like, so your royal oath, like. I'm a firm believer in people having like a long whole phase where they just let it all hang out and they go with the flow of every experience for just a quick minute to like experience as many experiences as you can. So that way you can actually know like this don't work. This does work. Yeah. I can do this. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. But then when you find a person that kind of checks a lot of them balls, you're like, oh, all right. The bad are all bads that I can tolerate, and the good are all goods that I need. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hey, you. We work. Stay around. Stick around with me. You know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. That's my two cents in Tiz's corner this week. Um, but, you but know. Texas. Hell no. I know we veered way the fuck off subject, but ain't no ex. Uh, nah. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Nah, nah bro. Nah. No, nah. that ain't that ain't gonna happen, bro. We ain't that is not the vibe, my boy. Not an ex, not a not a boo, not a. Now, what I will say is this: I've always told my wife, we are stuck together. If either one of us cheat, that motherfucker gotta come in and pay bills. Like you are part of the family now, motherfucker. You have you mm -hmm. have officially made yourself part of the family. You take on all responsibilities thereof. 
Welcome. I clear out the guest room for you, nigga. And vice versa, if, if I was the ever, but I ain't. I'm good. I I I do a threesome before I cheat. And I, ain't, I ain't even a fan of that because I'm scared my wife. Like I'm insecure when it comes to my wife a little bit, man. Like I don't want nobody liking my wife. <laughs> <laughs> like even another woman. Like nope, I don't want you. No, you eating a little mm. too. You going a little too hard, ma'am. You're, you're you're enjoying you. It's a little too much mm, 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 in your tongue action, man. Fuck too you. many compliments. Too many compliments. Hey, like I, yeah. I ain't even. <laughs> I want to get freaking with my wife, but I'm scared because I'm gonna have to beat a bitch ass or beat a nigga ass, like straight up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, ain't no exes jumping off. Jada will y'all some different uh creatures, man. Y'all some unstable creatures. 